each vowel has its own significance. So we will be doing a, and this was a haswa. Now going to the next one, the dirkha. So we do the same method we use for doing the haswa a. And now when it comes to a dirkha, we just put another um, vertical line just next to the um, the vertical line which we already drew. So next to a, you put another vertical line. It becomes a. So it becomes a dirkha. So I'll be showing you in paint. So again, make a, a semicircle, three-like shape, horizontal line, slightly inclined upward, and then straight vertical line. And then now the important part, we don't put the shirorekha immediately because that is for a. When we do a, the shirorekha as the rule applies always comes at the end. So we draw another vertical line next to this. And then we draw the shirorekha at the top. I'll do it one more time. So do this. The three shape. Horizontal line. A. And then. A. Shirorekha at the end. Okay, so the next vowel is E. We will go through the small, small uh, nuances of how to write and uh, the rules in specific as we go through each letter. So one rule I've already covered is that the shirorekha always comes at the end. So keep that in mind, write it down somewhere in your notebook so that it, you remember. When it's a letter, it always comes at the end of the letter. When it's a word, it comes at the end of the word. So this is E. You draw a small vertical line. And then from there, you take towards your left, you take a horizontal line to your left. And then you make a small curve. And then you draw an S-like shape, another curve, which goes like the opposite of a C. And then you make a small loop and end it at the bottom. Then you put the shirorekha at the end. So we'll go a little bit slowly. This is a small vertical line. Small vertical line and a horizontal. Left side, we take a line horizontally. The next step is after the horizontal line, take a small curve, a C kind of shape, and then an S. Then the same thing, small loop, and you make a small upward inclination just for that style, Shirorekha. So um, when you're writing with normal pen, because I know the confusion would be, I'm using the calligraphy tool, so it looks different here. So it would look like, This in your notebook, it would look like this. We'll go through A as well. I'll do it in order so we don't get confused. So uh, the first letter we learned looks like this. Sorry. Uh, the second letter, three like shape, horizontal line, vertical line, another vertical line. Shirorekha. Ah. Now E, small vertical line, horizontal line to the left, and curve, small loop at the bottom, a slight inclination towards the top. Shirorekha. Okay, yeah, hope it's visible now. Uh, 
Okay, we'll go through that again. So first letter we learn, it is a. So first we go through a small semicircle and another, these two should touch. So the, we'll go through the important points for each letter. It's like you're drawing in a circle. So when you're drawing in a circle, we need to make sure that uh, it, it is inside that circle, whatever we draw is inside that circle. So when we draw a, it will be like this. And make sure these two, this part is um, aligned and with this line a little bit towards the top. And that's regarding a. When we draw a, same thing applies. The bottom circle is a little bit larger than the top one, but they're almost the same size. And this, when we draw, make sure the horizontal line touches the vertical line. Uh, these need to be straight. Since I'm drawing on the computer, it won't be as accurate as it is when you draw on paper. So whenever I draw it a little bit slant, that doesn't mean that it's slant, it is straight. So, um, yeah. Uh, now E, small vertical line, go horizontally to the left, make a small snake-like movement, like an S, a small loop, and then slight curve towards the top. I think this should be helpful because when you're writing on paper, this is what it would look like. Okay, so if you have questions, you can also uh, type it in the chats and I'll look at them at the end. That would be better than writing in your notebook. So you can write your questions in the chats and I'll look at them. Okay. Now we go to the um, next letter, that is E. So the same thing which we did for E, the short E. The same movements we're going to make, the short vertical line, the S-like movement, and then the loop, and a small upward inclination. Then at the, after drawing the, um, at the top, we have a little hook-like structure, and then we have the shirorekha at the end. So I'll be taking you through this in paint. I hope my screen's visible now. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Small vertical line, S-like movement. Again, everything is in like a, a box or a circle you can think. So if this was a shirorekha, that would be E. Now when we draw E, we have to do a small vertical line, the same E, the short hraswa. This is the hraswa E. And then we draw a hook-like structure. When you draw this hook, remember to draw from top to bottom. So this is another thing that we need to add. We already learned one point that shirorekha or that vertical line comes at the end of the letter. The other thing, this is the next point is the hook-like structure. Whenever you draw something, anything, it always comes from top to bottom. And now we draw the vertical line, the shirorekha. It's called shirorekha because if this is the head, that would be the line on top of the head. If each akshara was a head, shiras, and then the rekha is a line on top of it. So we'll go through each step again. Please uh, write it down in your notebooks. A short line, and then a S-like curve, small loop, Now, after drawing this, we have a shirorekha, uh, not the shirorekha. First, we draw the hook on the top and then the shirorekha. So, if this was E, this would be E. E, E. I will not be writing it in English as that would create confusion. Sanskritam vowels are totally different from English vowels. Uh, 
Okay. We'll go to the next letter. Oh, so in this, you see the same shape that was made for A. Ah. So the letters are very simple in themselves, in the vowels especially. Most of them look alike. The trick and the challenge comes when identifying the difference and distinguishing between the each letter. So this looks very similar like uh, the A ah we learned and the A ah we learned. The only difference is that there aren't the vertical and horizontal lines after the the three like symbol. So this is a simple like three like symbol. So we'll be looking at this again in uh, in paint. Okay. So first you draw the semicircle. Yeah. So when we draw the um, second semicircle, it has to be pointing a little bit upward. It's it's not like this. Um, so it's more like this. A three would be more like this. So it, it could be taken upward. It can be done as uh, this, like ah uh, is this. So you will see variations as well. We'll talk about variations when we have them. For now, in these letters covered so far, ah, uh, ah, uh, e, e, there aren't uh, much variations seen in uh, like printing or other, uh, there aren't many ways of writing them differently. In the future, we will see few letters which will look differently. And when we um, look at that, we'll try to address the other types of writing the same letter so that you will easily be able to identify it when you see it in a textbook or some older texts. Okay, so this is a semicircle. Um, now, little bit upward. And now put the shirorekha on top. Simply put the shirorekha on top. So this is a very simple one. I hope everybody got through that because uh, it's similar to whatever we learned so far, the A. Ah. This is U. So this was U. This is U. Okay. So U is the same thing, but there's another um, semicircle, which is going to be like a hook to on the, the second semicircle that we drew. So on the bottom of the three, near it, not exactly through the middle. So I'll show it in paint, that would be better. So we have O. This is O, right? So as we know, we have to draw the Shirorekha at the end. O would be from here. It won't be so big. It will be the same size as the, the top um, semicircle. And then we draw a Shirorekha on the top. Okay, that was O. So if we observe, it's going in the uh, Hasva Dirgha, Hasva Dirgha format. So A is a short vowel. A is a long vowel, long version of A. E is short, Hasva. E is long, Dirgha. O is short. O is long. So whenever it's long, you see an additional um, and any uh, some additional writing going into it. And the shirorekha has to be carried out as long as far as the letter is. So we'll. So the shirorekha, for example, this is u. The shirorekha will be carried out up to here. So it's not going to be short. It won't be like, sorry. Uh, yeah, it won't, it won't be like this. We should, when we're showing the letter, we have to make sure that it takes, the shirorekha grabs the whole letter. So up till the neck, the, uh, the third uh, drawing that you see. I'll show it in steps and uh, 
with the normal tool so that we can understand normal pencil. So first, small semicircle. Take it up slightly. And then this hook-like structure. Shirorekha covers the whole uh, length and breadth of this. Okay. This is R. R, this we'll spend some time on it because this is a little bit different from what we learned so far. R is a vertical line. First, we draw a vertical line. Um, it's written wrong over there, but just uh, follow what is shown in the drawing. First, we draw a vertical line and then uh, there is uh, some diagonal line. It looks similar to a consonant, Sanyukta uh, Akshara that you will see in the future. So you draw the next step and then you make a little uh, loop and bring it down. So I'll show it in paint. look at it with the brush okay first we draw the vertical line then you have this shape then once you do that we have a small loop towards the top and then you bring it down curve it it's like an s at the side so the shirareka is added at the end This is the shirare card there. Let me show you the same thing in um, pencil. So first vertical line, then this lines, make sure they're not too long or short. See, this is, I've written it too long. So it has to be only till here. I'll do it step by step, vertical line, then the loop, Shirarek at the top. These have to touch, so this part has to touch. Wherever you see these um, points, make sure that they're touching. So we learned um, two things already. The shirorekha always comes at the end. So the shirorekha comes at the end. It comes at the end. And then one more thing is we always go from top to bottom. So we go from top to bottom. This is the second thing. Okay, this is the r. This is a vowel. This is not the ra or what um, you hear as a consonant. Like this is more of a r. This is not the ra that you see in Ravi. This is the r that you see in Rishi. So um, this is going to involve the same steps. So you can follow these steps one, two, three, and then four, a small hook at the bottom. And then five. We'll be carefully observing the difference between this um, r and the long r. So r is in. Um, it's not used very commonly. We'll be looking at the words uh, in from tomorrow onwards because after learning vowels, there isn't much of words we can learn with only vowels. So after we finish vowels and a few consonants, we'll be going into the words. Okay. So this is going to involve a vertical line. The same method we used for writing R, the short R. And then make a hoop stop there. 
So once you do that, make a little small C at the bottom and put a Shirorekha after that. I'll be showing you in, in a larger. Um, so first vertical line and then two diagonal lines like this. We make a small loop and then a C shape at the bottom. And then at the end, add a shiroreka, which is going to contain the whole letter within it. And all these points are connected. So if you see gaps when I'm writing, like it could be because of the computer. So if it's like this, this is not correct. We have to combine the letter. So if it is like this, it's wrong. This part has to be joined. They have to be connected together. So this is not um, first the line. Then we have to write like this. It's not this way. Uh, this will not be correct. They have to touch the horizontal lines. I mean the vertical line. So I hope that's clear. This is a special letter, L. It is not R or Lu or Li. People write it in many ways, um, but this is the way which we can um, learn for now. I will show you the alternative ways of writing this as well. So first we have a small loop and this looks like a heart-like symbol when we write it like this. But when you see it in another um, form, when I show you in another form, it won't look like that. It will look more like la. There is, so this letter, hmm, what is that? Yeah, so when you write, you see the second step of this. So here, this is actually like a Sanyukta Akshara Tra. So when we learn Sanyukta Akshara's, we have to remember not to get confused with the R and the Tra. And then this is L. So we'll be looking at this in uh, the paint. So first we take our brush and make a small um, curve. And then another curve and slightly bring it downward and make a loop. The bottom a slight curve, smaller than the ones at the top. Then make a horizontal line for the second uh, second uh, like loop that you made, second curve. So then draw a shiroreka at the top containing the whole letter. We'll do that again. So first, uh, first we make this same loop and then bring it down. Don't make these two touch. This shouldn't touch. And then uh, the line comes over here on the second one. It, it will be actually in the middle of the this area. Let me show you. This area, it will be in the middle of this. So it will be over here. A small vertical line. And then Shirurika at the top. So you may see it in textbooks written like uh, this. So don't get confused when it's written like this. It is the same thing. And some places I've also seen it written uh, like this. So this is also L itself. We, won't, we don't need to learn it. We just need to be able to recognize if anywhere else it's written this way. We should know that it is L. We'll go through each step once again. Um, okay. <clears throat> so first a curve, another curve, downward. In the middle of the second one, we have a small vertical line. Shirorekha at the top. We'll go to the next letter. So one thing is 
L does not have a dirgha. So L does not have a dirgha. L is has only a hrasva, and um, for this class, we'll be only learning the hrasva. There is a pluta which is uh, not going to be covered in this course, but L has only a hrasva. So till now, we observed there was a, a, e, e, u, u, r, r, and there is only one L. So there is no second L, there's no dirgha. Now we're looking at A. It is uh, slightly different from what we learned so far. So there is a vertical line downward, and then you grab uh, that from that point, you take it slightly horizontal, um, I mean, diagonal to the right, and then make a small uh, sideward movement to the left. And then next to it, you draw another vertical line and make a slight hook to the left. Then we draw a shirorekha on the top, covering the whole entirety of the letter. So we learned that shirorekha comes at the end. We always draw from top to bottom, as you can see even in this diagram, top to bottom, and from left to right. So this is the third thing that I want to introduce. We write from left to right. Some scripts, Arabic scripts, write from right to left, but in Devanagari, everything is written from left to right. You will observe uh, that. So the three things that I said so far, please make note of those things. They will help you when we move forward because this is the most simple part we're going to deal with today. Tomorrow we'll learn consonants and uh, and then gunitaksharani and that they will be more complex. So if we get the basics straight, it will be helpful for us. And so vertical line and then a small like diagonal line and a hook. After this, we draw a vertical line next to this and then push it inward a little bit. Again, the same thing. And Shirorek at the top. So what we need to observe here is when we draw a line like this, this is going to go a little bit, very slightly towards the right. This is not going to be um, behind the, the second line or too much ahead of it. It's not going to be here. So we need to make sure that it is just uh, after the second vertical line. Let me show you again. Vertical line, vertical line, diagonal, and then hook-like structure. Then the shirarekha. So you have observed that this is slightly towards the right it's not too much it's just very small distance but that uh, is important in this letter we'll go back to the slides so now we looked at a a is only dirgha so if you want you can make note of this it helps in pronunciation a is a dirgha there is no hrasva for this this is i we move on to the next letter there is no this hraswa of A, and there is no hraswa of I either. So it will be long. I, this is A, this is I. So this is going to move from the same way that we looked at A, and the shirorekha will be going uh, after the hook on the top. So just like E had a small hook on the top, we're going to look at I. So I is the same as, uh, we'll just look at E for a second, just to clarify that. So E has a small hook on the top and then we drew the shirorekha. So same thing we'll be doing for I. I is the same as A, except there is going to be um, a small hook at the top. So take it straight and now we're going to draw from the left to the right, A, I, E, and then a shirorekha in the middle. We'll go to the next one. This is O. So from here, it's very simple. You just follow the same thing we learned from for A, A, 
and you apply it to O, Au, Am, Aha. There are three, there are four more letters we're going to look at. So this is O. We'll uh, look at it in paint once. The good thing is that for practice, because we have so many swaras and they look similar, every time I'm showing you a, a, the next letter, you're going to have a revision of the previous, the first few letters we learned because they're similar. So this is first the hook, then another hook, and then we have a horizontal line slightly towards the uh, uh, top, and then we put another line we make a so we just draw a and now we draw a but we don't put the shiro rekha why because there is just like i there is a small line that comes on the top then we add the shiro rekha at the end that is o so once you get o perfectly we will look at au now so this is au. Au is exactly the same as o. First we draw o, and then we add one more line at the top, and it becomes au. These are the four letters: a, i, o, au. These letters do not have any um, uh, haswa. There is no short form of saying these. You have to say them long. We look at this in paint. This is O. When you add this to, um, one second. So first we draw A, then we draw O, and then one more line on top. Sorry. Yeah. And then we draw Shiro Rekha. Look at that again. A, O, Au. This is Au. So, the next letter is um, um. Um is the same as a, uh, we add a dot at the top and aha uh -huh is the next letter after this. We look at this together because there's a slight difference, not much of a difference in writing. This is aha, uh -huh. this is called the visarga and um is called the anuswara. So um, and this is aha. Uh -huh. Let's look at this in paint. So first we draw just this normal a, uh, and then we put a dot at the top. So the dot left to right. When we draw and paint uh, in the calligraphy pen, it looks like this. If you draw with a pencil, it will just look like a dot. So it will just look like a dot. This is um um. And then the shirarek at the end. Aha would be the same as a uh, and then we draw two dots and then a shiro rekha at the top the shiro rekha should cover up to here that would be enough yeah so these are the vowels we will be quickly looking at um at something from uh, as a revision of whatever we learned so far we'll be looking at something real quick Second. I hope my screen's visible. You can type in the comments. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be looking at the letters just as a revision recap. As we enter this beautiful new world of Sanskrit, let us first listen to the sounds of the language. Observe them carefully and they will soon be your best friends. Ah. Ah. E. E. Oh. And they will soon Okay. So, soon. wherever you see flowers, this... Ah. Uh, I'll be pronouncing it and you try to imagine the letter in your mind. So this is a. Uh, ah. Uh, e. E. U. U. R. R. 
l e e i o a o am aha so this is what that is um we will be playing a small game i'll share my sound so that you can uh, So this oh. in this game we'll be hearing the sound and you have to tell me which is the correct uh, letter. Oh. So they say O. Oh. Would it be one, two, three, four, or five? If we go from left to right, you can type your answers in the chats. Five. Yes, O is five. That is the correct answer. Perfect. Ah. So they're saying ah, one, two, three, four, or five. Which should be correct. Mm, I'm getting various answers. Ah, the first letter we dealt with today. Five, yes. So I think there's a confusion. We're going from left to right. So the first one is one, the second one is two, third, three, four, and five. Ah is the fifth option. That's correct. Ooh. So they're saying, ooh. They're saying the long O. So which one would that be? Um, yes, five. Perfect. A lot of you are getting it right. That's really good. So ah. ah. So I hear this as a long ah. Which one is this? Yes, one is perfect. Ooh. Ooh. So this is a short O. Which one would that be? Perfect. Three. Yes, correct. I. I. So this is also long. And there's only one I. There's no haswar dirkha. One. Yes, one is the correct answer. Ow. Ow. This is, this only has a long one. It was third to last letter we learned. Yes, five is the perfect answer. R. 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 So, okay, we'll be looking at R one more time. So I see the, there is a difference in writing here. This is the correct answer. E. I see a lot of you got it right anyways, but we'll just quickly look at... Um, okay, I hope the screen's visible. Uh, okay. So, R... We, we, we've written it like this for the r, the small one. And we've written the long one like this. So some people write r like this as r, the small r. And they write the second r with two, um, two hoops like this. So this is also something you would see. But don't get confused. The, the, we will be only looking at the top two in this class. Um, we'll go back to this game. E. So E, this is a long E. So what would the answer be? Yes, four. That's perfect. E. E. So this is short. E. Yeah. Fourth one again. No, perfect. You guys did really well. Everybody was very actively participating. I see your chats and I'm very happy with your participation. That's really good. I think we'll be learning the script very well. And so I wanted to conclude with, um, one second, let me just put my, yeah. So I wanted to conclude with whatever we learned today. So. I, it's always good to have a summary of the class because we feel accomplished when we know what we've learned. So first we uh, looked at the writing practice of the 15 swaras and then we had an opportunity to learn how to listen to each sound. And then when I told you guys to imagine how this uh, sound would look like as a letter. And then we had dictation which is identification practice. So we had writing, listening, and uh, a game which would help us in picking the correct letter. 
So I, I was using the module two of Akshara Mala. It is um it is a game and an app with designed by Vyoma itself. Bala uh, Sambhasha, that's what it's called. I will be providing that um, in the course content. So today, mostly we'll be having the course content ready. So 